Welcome back, Nerd Boxers. If you have not seen the video prior to this one, stop now. Go check out the non-spoiler review, unless you're too afraid to watch this movie. Or, or if you've already seen it. Mm -hmm. We're <laughs> going to dive into what this movie means, and it's going to contain spoilers. So you have been warned. Welcome to another episode of the Popcorn Confessional, and this is Dave from Nerdbox, and I'm accompanied by my wife, Jen, also from Nerdbox. And on this episode, we are talking about Skinnamarink, the spoiler episode. So fire up that Jiffy Pop and meet us in the booth. This is Brian O'Halloran, and you're watching the Popcorn Confessional. On the nerd box. <laughs> Sounds like a porn site. Last chance. Spoilers. So, leave. The film opens with a static shot from a TV in the living room, where we see two small children, Kevin and Kaylee, playing in what we can assume is the middle of the night. A series of thuds are heard in another room, followed by someone crying. We then hear Dad talking to someone on the phone about Kevin, who had an accident in the home. Yeah, so this is pretty early on in the film. Yeah. So when it happened, I was like, oh, okay. So, yeah, the, you hear the dad, it's kind of monotone, it's in the distance, and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, he, he's okay. monologue like oh Kevin got hurt but he didn't even require stitches I remember that was something that he said and I was like okay well that's interesting especially for a phone call in the middle of the night like who is he calling yeah yeah and at this time I, I don't necessarily believe that the mom was there the whole time yeah I don't know so I don't know what type of relationship that the parents have in the movie. It's not really, it's never really explored. Well, unless he was talking to the mom, like maybe she was at work and she, I mean, because I can't imagine who else he'd be talking to late at night about this, right? Like besides the kid's mom, like you're not just going to like call like your brother or sister or your own parents and be like, yeah, Kevin got hurt, especially if there was no reason to be like, it was no urgency. Mm -hmm. So. I can only imagine that he was talking to his wife. He's fine, but Kevin fell down the stairs and hit his head. Mm-hmm. No, they, they didn't even need to do stitches. I kind of think that this was more of a, a, a almost like a trap. It's like, hey, uh, yeah, the kids are kind of hurt, so you gotta mm -hmm. come here. And maybe they're not even married anymore. Maybe they're divorced, he has custody, or maybe he has them for the weekend or something like that, and he's just kind of had enough. I don't know. I don't know. Because at one point, they do show them in the same bedroom, in the same bed. I mean, they're well, not... they're not really in the same bed. They're sitting on opposite sides. Yeah. As the kids begin to look for their parents, the house begins to transform with things disappearing. Like all of the exterior doors and windows. And some objects in the home appear on the ceilings or the walls. As they continue their search, we hear a series of whispers, grunts, cries, and someone asking the children to do terrible things. This, to me, is where I kind of started feeling like, ooh, I don't think they're alive anymore. Yeah. And it's like some sort of purgatory that they're mm -hmm. in. If you've seen the movie The Others... That was the kind of feel I was starting to get. It's like, oh, okay, so the windows are gone now, the mm -hmm. doors are gone, it's yeah. still pitch black, yeah. parents aren't answering, yeah. so what the hell has happened? But yet the kids don't leave the house, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, there, there's no doors, there's no windows, and also the weird things that are happening, right? Like the, you know, the objects ending up on the ceiling or on the walls, like randomly. So that would definitely make you feel like it's some kind of like a different timeline type thing like it's they're not there alive in that time period mm -hmm. 
the one big thing throughout the movie was the TV shows that they're watching. They're they're older. They're probably pre seventies. One of the cartoons has a spider, mm -hmm. and it has two little kid insects yeah. that it captures and it throws into the web. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh. And then later on in the film, we see a kid trying to escape and just opening up doors. And it goes to another door and it goes to another door. Like, yeah. So the cartoons are there to help guide us through the movie. Yeah, that and I've seen trapped. that cartoon before, too, where you just open one door and into another room with another door. <laughs> Kevin manages to find his parents, and they're sitting on their bed. But for some reason, they don't seem to acknowledge his presence at first. But then we hear the mother telling Kevin to close his eyes and sleep. Not too long after, we see splashes of blood and then hear the mangled screams of a young boy. We've gone from purgatory to, I think, something a lot more sinister and darker. And that's what I was getting towards the middle of the film. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm starting to feel a little uneasy about this movie because mm -hmm. it seems like there was a lot of physical abuse and mental yeah. abuse that was probably going on with the, the father and maybe the mother and the kids. Mm -hmm. And it almost seemed like that, I don't know if you've seen it on YouTube, but there's a video that's floating out there about Chris Watts who killed his wife and his kids in his home and his pregnant wife. Police go to search the house and they actually pick up on voices that are muffled in the distance and it's not a camera crew following them. They actually picked it up on their chest cams. On their body cams, because they weren't there <laughs> investigating the paranormal. They were there investigating Chris Watts, and they were doing a search of the house to see if they could find any evidence. Well, actually, they weren't investigating him at this time. He was there. Um, they were just looking for any evidence they may find, any clues, that sort of thing, and they just had their regular body cams on, and they picked up on, like, little girls, like, giggling and kind of saying, like, oh, my sister's here, like, mm -hmm. that sort of thing, and it was two little girls that he killed. Yes. And that's the same thing that you kind of get in this movie here. We hear the whisperings that kind of lead you down the path of yeah. something really bad happened in that house. And at this point, I'm thinking, like, oh, yeah, all right. So the dad has already killed the two little kids. Yeah. And he's calling the wife to say, hey, come home. There was an accident. He's okay. But Yeah. it's And some of the whispers that you hear is like, I mean, like at one point, Kevin asks where his sister is. And you hear a voice say, she wouldn't be quiet. So I took her voice away. Mm -hmm. That's really, really horrible. That's um, That tells me that, oh, you know, your sister did this, so I beat her ass. Yeah, basically, right. like, except that he essentially, I mean, he killed her. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then you hear a voice, like, say to Kevin, like, pick up the knife and stab it in your eye. Mm -hmm. Just like, so, and I'm wondering if that's the accident that gets called to the mom. I don't, I don't know. Um, and then you just hear, like, this kid just screaming. Yeah. yeah, and then there's the one scene where you see blood just splatter across the floor, it pulls back, splatters across the mm -hmm. floor, it pulls back. Yeah. And another big thing with the cartoon was, is the rabbit and the dog. So the rabbit disappears, the dog gets shocked, then we loop it over and over and over again, which tells me, it's like, hey, these are ghosts now. Mm -hmm suffering from a tragedy of abuse that was going on in the home mm -hmm. and now they're stuck 
just yeah. reliving this moment over and over again in the house which makes it a really really scary story yeah it does and it as my husband said in like the in our spoiler free review if you've had any sort of like tragedy in your life or you know if you've been like the victim of abuse in any way then maybe this isn't the movie for you because it probably could bring back like buried memories that maybe you don't want to think about it, because even for a person who hasn't been through it it's it's a tough watch as far as like not really a watch because you don't see a whole lot but the listening like to hear these things being said and then and then to kind of think about people like chris watts and the things that they've done to their families for those of you who may not know skinnamarink is a child's song I don't know if you, they would say like, skinnamarinky dinky do, I love you, like that. I believe those were some of the words to this, you know, some of the words in the song. I do remember the song, but it's been a really long time since I heard it. I didn't even think about it when you first said, oh, when they, we saw the movie, you know, the trailer and it said skinnamarink and I'm, I hadn't even thought about that song in like years and I'm like, holy shit, like, why is it called skinnamarink? <laughs> it's a cover. <laughs> Yeah. Right? It's a cover yeah. for abuse because there's so many of those abusers out there that float under the radar. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, well, we're this big happy family like Chris Watts. And then yeah. shit goes wrong. Everybody thought they were like the all, literally, they were like, they call, what did they say, name the story? The family next door or something like that? Like, because that's what they seemed like. Mm -hmm. So, what did you think? Is it about child abuse? Is it about a family being murdered? Is it, or is it both? I mean, I really... Or is that it something completely different? Maybe. Maybe we're way off base. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But that's all the things that I picked up from it. Uh, I did take a look out there and see what else was being said about this movie. A lot of people think that the mom was the child abuser. I was like, oh, I didn't really kind of pick up on that. I don't... Yeah, especially when she kind of says to Kevin, she's like, just close your eyes and go to sleep. Like, I almost feel like she was the one that was always trying to be like just close your eyes and then you won't see what's going on like yep. that sort that's of thing that's what i picked up on from that like you know if you just close your eyes and go to sleep then dad will leave you alone right he's not gonna bother you if he thinks you're sleeping I, that mm, i have chills right now that's like really messes with my head <laughs> i don't like that <laughs> yeah so let us know what you think about this movie what you think about what it is the meaning behind the movie is if you had a chance to watch it did it really screw you up drop it in the comments I screwed her dog up. She refused to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, don't forget it is the quest for 5,000 subscribers, and you can help us get there by liking, subscribing, and sharing. Yes. And every video along that journey to 5,000 subscribers will have a chance to give out some prizes. And all it takes is 25 likes and 25 comments. We do that three times, and you get three different prizes that are given out to three different winners and then if we hit 100 likes and 100 comments we'll send out a full-size poster from the movie theater and once we hit 5,000 subscribers you have a chance to win this box of strawberries and scream cereal signed by matthew lillard and david arquette and it's not available in the u.s nope anyway until the next see you see you